All right, girls and boys. <laughs> I promised you this, and so here's a quickie. It ain't going to be professional, but uh, it's a Sunday afternoon, and I got some yard work to do. It looks nice out there. All right, here is the uh, all-band version of the pre-selector. If you look back at my other uh, uh, a recent YouTube uh, thing, you'll see here is the original. It was uh, AM band only. Prototype for a customer. It's going to go out in a box and uh, see what he says. But I'm trying to talk him into this, and I'll get into why uh, he may want this one. Um... This basically is the same thing with the addition of uh, multi bands for the uh, uh, pre selector. Sorry, I'm uh, trying to do a bunch of things at once here. And uh, so we've added that. We've eliminated the broadcast band filters that were in here. It would allow, this would allow him to zero in on his station and get rid of. Uh, if he was near the tower, any FM or other AMers that are in the near field, something that would clobber the system. So this this actually ended up being 48 dB of attenuation. I think I got the numbers wrong in the last video. But anyhow, uh, we're doing all band now. We're going down to 10 or 20 kilohertz, way down below, lower into the VLF band. Um, we moved the... Uh, Veractor tuning circuit from the front to the back. It's in its own little shielded case with its own nine, little 9-volt nine power supply. 9 volts is probably as high as you want to go with a BB-112 Veractor. And we've done some uh, multi, little multi-coupler boards so we could have four outputs. I've also provided a switch on the front here that he can go direct out if he only has one receiver, but I figured I'd give him the option of having that. As usual, we gave him the uh, choice of multiple inputs, so uh, not that he's going to use different antennas, but he's probably not going to know what connectors he has at hand, or they, it'll change, you know, depending on where he is and what he's doing. So we have an SO, a B and C, an F, and an RCA. Uh, he was using... Uh, I want to say it was a GE Super Radio with a a link coupled to the uh, ferrite bar and uh, RCA for quick work. But we got to get them a little more professional than that. Anyhow, here's a here's a quickie on the front panel as usual. Uh, signal level, and he can uh, select his antenna ports. One of the uh, one of the four back here. Uh, source impedance, we're doing the same thing. We've got a nice little uh, toroid that gives him anywhere from 25 ohms, which, oddly enough, I'm in the AM broadcast band now, and on my 80 meter, I've got to go to 25 ohms down here to, uh, to get the best signal transfer. It's not terribly critical, uh, but it uh, makes a difference, and you really got to have it. If you're going to be a pro, you got to have it. Um, Shunt level, which is really an input attenuator, it's it's a pot across the entire front end, uh, the beginnings of the front end. And again, he may be near the tower where he's got volts per meter, or out in the field where he's got microvolts. So he's got to be able to not clobber everything that's in here, uh, or his radio, his receiver. Uh, moving along, uh, drive level to the uh, the preamp. Uh, and that's all calibrated nice nice there you go the camera focused that's that's lucky um, again same reason you don't want to overdrive the, uh, the little preamp back here this is a very simple but very clean I like the kiss principle low noise uh, 15 dB of uh, maximum gain uh, well balanced 50 and 50 out uh, and it's all, again, all calibrated here. Focus, please. Thank you. And that, in turn, drives the um, uh, the preamp. 
also calibrated. Uh, I love it when this focuses. And again, the dual scale dB and yellow for the ratio. So he knows it's 6 dB. He's at 2 to 1 and 10 dB, 3 to 1. And we go down here. We give him 6 to 1 at 15 dB. Not going to need more than that. And then we go over to the, uh, the pre-selector thing. The usual uh, tune. Instead of the uh, mechanical air core uh, uh, variable capacitors, we're now using the, the little uh, varactors. And if you've seen any of my YouTube videos, you know that Bob is just in love with that. Uh, air variables are gone for receiving, as far as I'm concerned. That's subject to change because I do that. Let me turn the light out here. So you can see this better. When we invoke uh, the pre-selector here, you see that we get a light. And right now, I'm in the uh, 200K to 1 meg band. Selected here. I don't know how to do this. I need a cameraman. I also need a producer and a director, too, probably. I need somebody who's going to pay me for this. Anyhow, all right, I'm going to tune here. And you can uh, you know, watch my uh, S meter. Tuning up, up, up. And I just went through it. I'm tuning up still more. Let me, let me give this uh, a little more gain. Now, we'll go here. I've got the AGC turned off, so... Uh, we're actually using the Watkins Johnson as a piece of test equipment. All right. All the way down, dead air. And we're coming up, up. I'm going up, 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 up. Passing right through the peak. I'm still going up, 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 up. We passed over the peak and back down, dead air. Very now, let me show you how much I moved that from, from here to about here. Maybe you can hear it in the background. So that works, that that really works. And again, I measured the other day, I measured 50 something dB in, in the broadcast band. Um, up here at the higher end, you get up around uh, 7, 10, 12, 20 megs. Uh, it's not that. Uh, tight, but tight enough for uh, for shortwave. Of course, he's not going to be there until, and I'm getting to that, and here's what I'm getting to. I built it a 10 meg up converter. Uh, I provided a broadcast band notch. It takes everything out from uh, five kilo, 500 kilohertz up to, uh, well, almost a 160 meter band. So, uh, I'll call it 1.8, 1.85 uh, megs. Flip this on, and we go to uh, plus 10. I'm going to play that in a minute for you. And again, the output thing, green, he's going direct. See the direct output? If I go to yellow, the four-way, he can pick one of those if he, if he has more than one receiver. That's just a silly option. He may not ever use it, but, you know got to have it. All right, let's set up the uh, the 10 meg here. Stand by, I'll be right back. Okay, that was quicker than you thought, huh? Okay, I have uh, taken my receiver up to 10 megs, 10.6. I'm dialed in at 600 uh, kilohertz AM, and we're invoking this to take it out. Of course, the audio, I don't know if you can hear that or not, the audio goes away uh, because it ain't receiving nothing. There we are, we're back in. Notice I put the broadcast notch in. Uh, you can't see it because of the AGC, but it's it really affected. Uh, you can see it here. And that's, 600 is uh, really down near the bottom, so... The filter may not be at its sharpest, but it really works. It works well. Uh, the reason I did that is most uh, general coverage receivers are very good mid-band. Anything above, uh, you know, two megs or so, they're usually pretty good, but they're not so hot down in the broadcast band. A lot of them have built-in attenuators. 
uh, because they're dealing with strong local signals and they don't want an armada overload and all that. So uh, I reasoned that uh, if we go up to the 10 meg line uh, band rather uh, and convert everything up by that amount, uh, we're going to be doing pretty good. And I'll tell you, it really, really, really works. That was three reallys. That's how well it works. Uh, we get a better one, it'll be four reallys. Here's the little converter. It's just a, uh, I think it's an NE602. I, there's another YouTube on this thing. Uh, it's clean, it's simple, and again, the KISS principle, it works. Uh, I tried it shielded. It wasn't necessary. There's the box. I had it in a box. It took up a lot of room in here, and I didn't really need it, so uh, it works. And, you know, Bob is really, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy doing yard work. Um, again, I'm using the old uh, military, rather than commercial uh, signaling, or what they call tally light indicators. Tally lights are just a quick idiot light, like on your dashboard in the car. Uh, at a glance readings. You don't have to look at meters, or you don't have to read nomenclature and which module is on and off and all that. And the usual is, uh, the old days, commercial stuff, red was just a, a pilot light. If you saw red, the unit was on. Well, it's not that way with the commercial and the military stuff. Red is off, or it indicates a problem. I'll show you. I'll go over here to, this is the only one I did it to because it's that important, is the uh, signal uh, shunt or operate from the uh, antenna ports. I shut it off. Uh, I don't know if this shows it. It's blinking. If you could see it blinking. Uh, blink means immediate attention required. If you had a green that was blinking, uh, it would mean that you're using a function that uh, isn't necessarily used all the time, and it's just to advise you to draw your attention to the fact that uh, it's on. Hey, pay attention to me. Normal operating uh, systems would be a solid green, no blinking. Uh, amber is uh, information, and that's what we have here, amber or yellow. Caution or information only, no warning. And for power, they seem to be using blue now. Uh, they don't seem to. It's in writing in some of the specs, so that's what we did. Um Again, the usual thing, because you're dealing with, with microvolt and sub-microvolt uh, signals, very, very clean, very clean, three varies for that. Pi filter output after the regulator, uh, we're coming in here at about 16, it says 14, it's actually about 15 volts we're coming in there. I got about 16 of raw DC, I'm kicking it down to 12, it's knocking the tops off of any garbage that may be there well into the DC part of the uh, uh, the AC to DC conversion. Again, the Pi network to clean things up. It, it goes from uh, at, the, at the regulated and filtered side at 16 volts, um, about one or two, sometimes close to three millivolts of noise, which is pretty darn clean if you compare it to commercial power supplies. Um, we get over here through the pie thing, and we're down to 12 after the regulator, and we're down to, believe it or not, sub-millivolt noise readings on the scope. And I'm talking about a third of a millivolt, like 300 microvolts. It's clean. It's clean. And, of course, we're not taxing the transformer. There's plenty of amps in reserve, so we're not sagging the voltage there. Uh, here's another stage of filtering, of course, for the... Uh, for reactor, we're going to focus, 9 volts, you get away with 8 on the output, but uh, 9 is fine, uh, some people use 10, I wouldn't go over 12, you're looking for trouble, uh, and that's about it. Now, I want to point out that my friend Rick Cutter is a very, uh, very avid hobbyist, and him and I have become friends over the years. He has built a lot of this stuff very much like this. He's done his own panels, uh, his own machining, does beautiful wiring work. 
And he's a very sincere experimenter. So he's here on YouTube to look for Rick Cutter. Uh, look for his YouTube stuff. And my hat's off to him. He's, uh, he's a, a great guy. Uh, oh, one other thing I should point out. When you're doing stuff like this, bypass. Do a lot of our, I don't know if you can see it. Here's a little uh, green, little green bypass uh, cap. As we're feeding, all these red wires are, again, retina color code. Yellow, uh, yellow's input, blue's their output, and uh, there's a few other things. But red, red is always B+. Plus. Uh, orange could be a secondary B+, plus like we have down in here. B, a VCC in, and then uh, the regulated VCC is orange. Again, over here, here's another little greeny, a decoupling. Uh, just a couple of little hints. Anyhow, it's the, uh, I'm calling it the pre-SW2, because there is an SW1. Uh, but this one has the up converter. I think that uh, Joe is going to be happy with this. Uh, if he doesn't want it, I'll sell him one without the module. Uh, but all his previous work, he's loved the ones with we did with the uh, uh, air variable caps. Uh, that's kind of archaic these days. I know a lot of guys will probably want to knock a few of my teeth out for saying that, but uh, if you can do it electronically and not mechanically, do it. Do it, do it. All right, that's about it. I went really, really long because I always do because I'm Bob and I talk a lot. Um, thank you, Rick, for inspiring me. Uh, I'm going to help you out with the lightning strike and see what I can do to get you back on the air. That's another story. Um, it's Bob in one KPR is my, uh, YouTube thingy here and, uh, bobsamerica.com, my channel, my uh, website rather. And, uh, there's the AM only without much trouble. We went to, uh, all band right out to 32 megs or more actually. Take care everybody. Stay safe. Wash your hands, wear gloves. I don't know. Just, just be cool. Take it easy. See you later. Bye-bye.